The ECAM system keeps a watchful eye on all of the aircraft systems, monitoring them for any abnormal states. If something abnormal is detected, ECAM will alert the pilots and provide an electronic procedure to help handle the abnormality. The two ECAM displays, the engine warning display and the system display, provide normal and abnormal system information to the pilots. Color coding is used on the ECAM screens for clarity and to aid identification of abnormal parameters. The main colors used are white, blue, green, amber, red. During the course, you will become familiar with the use of this color coding. Let's start with the last three, green, amber and red, which are the most important. Green color coding is used to indicate a normal condition. Notice that on the engine warning display and the system display shown, all indications are normal. Amber color coding is reserved for abnormal indications that require crew awareness, but not immediate crew action. Notice on the engine warning display the amber failure message and on the system display the amber indications. Red color coding is reserved for serious parameter exceedance and warnings that require immediate crew action. Notice the red warning message on the engine warning display. Let's now look at the two ECAM displays in a little more detail. The engine warning display is divided into two main parts, the upper area and the lower area. The upper area is used for the main engine parameters, fuel on board, FOB, and slat flap position indications. They will be discussed in the appropriate system modules. Under normal conditions, the lower part of the engine warning display is used to display memos. In the example shown, the memos indicate that the seat belt and no smoking signs are switched on and that the APU is available for use. If failures occur, Warning caution messages are displayed in place of the memos. In the example shown, there is an amber caution message with a series of blue action items. These action items are your electronic procedure to follow in order to respond to the particular abnormal situation. The system display is used to display particular system information. In the example shown, the cruise page is displayed. This is the page normally seen for the majority of the time that the aircraft is airborne. Information that is useful during flight from several systems is displayed. The individual indications will be covered in the appropriate system modules. The system display can also be used to display synoptic diagrams of the aircraft systems. In the example shown, the hydraulic system page has been called. You will see later how these system pages are called either manually or automatically. An aircraft status page may be displayed on the system display to check the state of the aircraft. A normal message is displayed to indicate that the aircraft state is normal and that there are no inoperative systems. Let's see what the status page looks like when things are not normal, for example, following a system failure. The information displayed on the status page will vary depending on the failure, but as an example, can include limitations, Approach procedures, including actions and corrections. 
information in operative systems. The area at the bottom of any system display contains permanent data. Total air temperature, TAT, static air temperature, SAT, time, gross weight, GW. Under normal conditions, the ECAM system provides the pilots with the information that they need to know for the particular phase of flight. No more, no less. As an example during approach, when the landing gear is extended, the ECAM wheel system page is automatically displayed. The ECAM system divides the various stages of a flight into phases, from initial electrical power up until after engine shutdown. The ECAM system will avoid alerting the pilots unnecessarily during the critical flight phases of takeoff and landing. The warning We will now look at the different ways that the ECAM system advises you when things are not going exactly right. We will start with a minor advice indication and work up to a major fault, concentrating on the two ECAM screens. If a system parameter, for example an engine vibration level, approaches a limit, the ECAM system will advise you of this by displaying the relevant system page on the system display. The affected parameter will pulse. Notice that at this stage the parameter is still shown in green since it is still within normal limits. This is known as an ECAM advisory. Now let's look at what happens when ECAM detects a minor system failure. When a failure occurs, leading to a loss of redundancy or loss of a system that does not affect the safety of the flight, for example, DFDR fault, the ECAM system will inform you by displaying an amber caution message on the engine warning display. This type of failure is classified Level 1. At the same time, the two clear keys on the ECAM control panel, ECP, will illuminate. The first action is to ensure that the aircraft is on a safe flight path. This fault only requires crew awareness, so if required, the handling of the fault can be delayed. Normally the pilot non-flying carries out the ECAM procedure, while the pilot flying is responsible for the aircraft flight path. For this exercise, you are the pilot non-flying. Read the title of the failure. In this case, Recorder DFDR Fault. In this case, there are no actions required, so after confirmation from the pilot flying, the caution message can be cleared by pressing one of the clear keys on the ECP. Press a clear key. As a result of pressing either clear key, the caution message has been cleared from the engine warning display, and the status page is displayed automatically. In this example, you can see that the inoperative system is the DFDR. On the ECP, the status key is illuminated along with the two clear keys. When safe to do so, the status page is reviewed by both pilots. After confirmation from the pilot flying, the status page is cleared by pressing either of the status keys or one of the clear keys. Clear the status page. Notice that on the engine warning display there is a boxed status caption to tell you that there is information on the status page. On the ECP there are no lights. The ECAM actions for the DFDR fault are complete.
We will now look at what happens when a slightly more serious fault is detected by ECAM. The fault that we will use is an overheat of the blue hydraulic system reservoir. We will concentrate on the use of the ECAM system, how it alerts you and how it helps you to deal with the fault. The hydraulic indications themselves will be covered in the appropriate modules. Click on the forward arrow to initiate the failure. When the fault occurs, the ECAM system alerts the crew orally and visually. You will hear a single chime and see the master caution lights. To cancel the master caution lights and reset the alerting system, one of the master caution push buttons must be pressed. Extinguish the master caution light. The master caution lights are extinguished and the alerting system is reset. The first priority is always to ensure the safe flight path of the aircraft before dealing with the fault. The master caution means that the abnormal situation needs crew awareness but not immediate action. This failure which hasn't any direct consequence on flight safety, is classified Level 2. The indications are a failure message on the engine warning display, the system synoptic associated with the fault is automatically displayed on the system display, the clear keys on the ECP light up. Let's study the details on the engine warning display first. The system title is underlined, in this case hydraulics, and the fault is shown alongside blue reservoir overheat. Notice that abbreviations are used. Notice the amber overheat message on the system display. This abnormal indication is displayed where the failure has occurred on the synoptic system. The pilot flying will ask you to perform the ECAM actions. In this example, there is a blue action line on the engine warning display telling you to switch off the blue electrical pump. Now let's check the overhead panel. On the overhead panel, an amber fault light has illuminated on the hydraulic control panel. The fault light on the hydraulic panel helps you to locate the switch to be operated. We will carry out the action for you. When the pump is switched off, the action line is removed. The blue hydraulic system depressurizes as shown on the hydraulic page by the amber indications. The ECAM system detects the drop in pressure and generates a further alert. You hear the chime and see the master caution lights. Extinguish the master caution light. There is now a new abnormal message on the engine warning display. Blue system low pressure. The message is boxed to indicate that the loss of the blue hydraulic system is classed as a primary failure that will affect other systems. The systems affected are shown on the right of the engine warning display as starred items called secondary failures. In this example, the primary failure of the blue hydraulic system has caused a secondary failure of flight controls. After review and confirmation from the pilot flying, the hydraulic failure message on the engine warning display can be cleared. Clear the hydraulics message. Notice that normal memos have returned on the left side of the engine warning display. The ECAM flight control system page is displayed on the system display, which corresponds to the secondary failure item on the engine warning display.
On the ECAM flight control page, notice that the controls affected by the loss of the blue hydraulic system have amber indications. These indications will be discussed in the hydraulic and flight control modules. After review and confirmation from the pilot flying, the flight control secondary failure message can be cleared. Clear the flight control page. Notice that the secondary failure indication on the engine warning display has been removed. The status page is now displayed containing several pieces of information. The first area gives procedures to be applied for landing and other information. The second area gives information about inoperative systems following the blue hydraulic failure. You will study the procedures in the appropriate system lessons. The status page is reviewed by both pilots. After confirmation from the pilot flying, the status page can be cleared. Clear the status page. The ECAM actions for a blue hydraulic reservoir overheat are complete. Notice that the status reminder is displayed at the bottom of the engine warning display, reminding you that there is information on the status page. This is important when approach procedures have to be applied. If it contains information, the ECAM system automatically recalls the status page during the approach phase when the slats are extended. This is done if there are any items affecting the approach and landing. You can see that in the example shown, there is a landing distance procedure to be applied. You will see how these approach procedures are applied later in the training. Clear the status page. The status page is cleared and the cruise page is displayed. So far, we have looked at how the ECAM system advises you of minor failures. We will now look at what happens when there is a serious failure that requires immediate action. To demonstrate this, we will use an engine fire. As before, we will not concentrate on the system failure, but on ECAM indications and procedures. This kind of failure is classified Level 3. Be ready to cancel the warning by pressing a master warning push button switch. Click on the forward arrow to initiate the failure. When the fault occurs, the ECAM system alerts the crew orally and visually. You hear a continuous repetitive chime and see the master warning lights flashing. Press one of the master warning push buttons to cancel the master warning lights, stop the chimes, reset the alerting system. On the engine warning display, the red message, engine one fire, and the associated procedure are displayed. The red push button on the fire control panel and the red indication on the engine panel provide confirmation and identification of the affected engine. The engine page has automatically been called on the system display and in this example the nacelle temperature is pulsing. Notice that there is a red land ASAP message on the engine warning display. This means that the fault detected is serious enough to require a landing as soon as possible. The pilot flying maintains control of the aircraft and asks you, as pilot non-flying, to start the procedure. We will do the ECAM actions for you, starting with setting thrust lever 1 to idle. This action would be done by the pilot flying. CF task sharing. Note, when the first officer or captain has to move one thrust lever, the SOP recommends cross-confirmation of both pilots. The second action to be performed by the pilot non-flying 
after confirmation by the pilot flying, is to switch engine 1 off, as written on the ECAM procedure. We will do it for you. After switching engine 1 off, the engine 1 shutdown procedure is shown on the engine warning display. Notice that the amber caution procedure has appeared below the red one. This happens because you have to finish the engine fire procedure before carrying out the actions for engine 1 shutdown. The ECAM system has automatically allocated priority to the warning. As a result of switching off the engine, there are now secondary failures. The next ECAM action to be performed by the pilot non-flying, after confirmation by the pilot flying, is to push the engine 1 fire push button. We will do this for you. Notice that there is a white line in the abnormal procedure. In this example, there is a delay in discharging the agent to let the engine spool down. We have paused the countdown at 10 seconds. To continue the countdown, click on the forward arrow. When the countdown is complete, a blue action line appears, telling you to discharge the first fire bottle. We will do this for you. The next action line is for the pilot flying to notify ATC, air traffic control. Since the ECAM system cannot tell when you are talking, there is no feedback so this line will not disappear. Notice that we still have a red fire indication, which means that the fire is not extinguished. Another condition line has appeared, and a second countdown automatically starts. This one is 30 seconds long. We have paused the countdown. To continue the countdown, click on the forward arrow. Agent 1 managed to extinguish the fire. The countdown for Agent 2 stopped immediately. Notice that the engine fire procedure on the ECAM disappeared. This means the fire is out. The local warnings on the fire control panel and the engine master panel are no longer illuminated, confirming that the fire is out. Land ASAP has changed from red to amber, which means that ECAM has determined that the fault is less critical, but still requires a landing as soon as possible. The remaining steps are similar to those seen for an ECAM caution, so we will stop here. You have seen that the ECAM system has provided a smart and interactive procedure to help you deal with a major problem. So far, the messages and procedures displayed on the engine warning display have not been more than seven lines, so we have had room to display them all. Let's look at how ECAM copes with a long procedure. In this example of the indications for an engine fire on the ground, there is an overflow arrow to indicate that there is more information to be seen. For training purposes, we have shown the rest of the procedure below the engine warning display. We will complete the ECAM actions and you will see the associated line of the procedure disappear. As actions are completed, the rest of the information will be displayed and the overflow arrow will be removed. On the status page, an overflow arrow also indicates that there is further information to be seen on a second page.
By pressing a clear key, the next page can be displayed. Press a clear key. The second page of status information is displayed. Notice that the list of inoperative systems has not changed and that there is still an overflow arrow. Press a clear key. The last page of inoperative systems is displayed and the overflow arrow is removed. If you want to display the first status page again, the status key can be pressed. Press the status key. We're now back at the first status page again. You will have the opportunity to practice moving between status pages in the simulator, so we will stop here. To summarize, Initially, you see all the information on the left side of the status page and then all the inoperative systems on the right. To complete this module, let's briefly look at ECAM priority. For this demonstration, we will only use the bottom part of the engine warning display and we assume the engine one fire procedure is complete. You are partly through the Engine 1 fire procedure when ECAM detects another failure. The low priority recorder DFDR fault has appeared below the higher priority Engine 1 fire and Engine 1 shutdown procedures. Unfortunately, it is one of those days and another failure occurs. The autopilot off warning has appeared above the engine 1 fire procedure. ECAM has automatically assigned priority to the autopilot off message because the first priority is always to fly the aircraft. The low priority recorder DFDR fault is now off the screen. You are advised that the fault is there by the unstarred recorder text in the right hand column of the engine warning display and the green overflow arrow. We will clear the auto flight autopilot off warning for you. The recorder DFDR fault message is back at the bottom of the engine warning display and the recorder text has been removed from the right hand column. In this module we have discussed the ECAM system. You have seen the various failure levels and how the ECAM system alerts, indicates and helps you deal with a failure. Throughout the ground school course and during your simulator sessions you will have the opportunity to practice ECAM procedures.